Welcome to the Introvert Sisters, the podcast by introverts for introverts, hosted by Sharon and Lisa, two INFJs with a lot to say. Hi, I'm Sharon. And I'm Lisa. And together, we're the Introvert Sisters. Welcome, guys. Welcome to our podcast. <laughs> It's exciting today because not only have we been doing this for a little while now, but we are doing our first video podcast recording. Pray for us, y'all. Pray. Yeah, we'll see how that turns out. Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting because part of the reason why we started this is, you know, as introverts, we were like, great, you know, this way we never have to show our faces on camera. <laughs> but, but here we are, you know. Part of uh, life is getting outside of your comfort zone and growing and going through that whole process. So that is part of what we're going to do. That is part of what we're going to do. And, yes. you know, it's been, it's been, you know, it's been an interesting few weeks for everybody and we're not going to dwell on it too, too much, but I do want to say that what resonated with me recently was, was Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah is every introvert do, during lockdown. Because here's what okay, he said. How do you mean Trevor Noah? Trevor Noah, you mean the, um, the, ho- the late night host? He did. He, he, yeah, exactly. Him, him. Because he said, okay. he said, I feel like I'm made for social distancing. She, he said, mm-hmm. some of my friends are going crazy because they miss being outdoors. I don't miss being outdoors. I don't miss going to the movies. I don't miss anything. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> and I thought, okay, that is introverts, uh, introvert heaven, isn't it? You know, he said, yeah. this is how I wish I could live life, being forced to stay indoors and not being made to feel guilty every time I don't want to leave because it's a beautiful day. I feel that. Yeah. I, told, I feel that in my, in, my, in my heart. I feel it. Yes. In our core. In our core. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's um, every now and then I have felt a little bit restless or you know in need of some fresh air but not horribly you know oh. not enough to make me actually want to venture out <laughs> and no i mean apart from you guys you know and a few close friends i don't miss people you know that is not likely to ever happen in my life you know i don't miss people and i'm enjoying you know there's still some social distancing going on th- thankfully and so i'm enjoying that whole thing like just stay away yeah stay over- for the first time in our lives, there's very little pressure to be sociable. Mm-hmm. In fact, you know, we, we are doing a good thing by yes. being my introvert selves. We are actually saving the world. <laughs> We're helping to save the world. I love it. I love it. Yes, I love yes. it. And speaking of the world, let's start mm-hmm. with In Our World. Over to you, sis. Okay, so In Our World, um, clearly, you know, we're, many of us are introverts. And um, what, what I, when I say us... I mean, women of color. Uh, But what it seems like is as if black women are not, quote unquote, allowed to be introverts. We're not allowed to be uh, introverted, quiet, shy, delicate. Um, You know, if one wants to be the maiden, you know, one is never allowed to be the maiden. You know, black women tend to have to fit into a stereotype. Is it? expected that we are loud and bodacious and loquacious you know or we're the mammy or the or the usual angry black woman and um you know so heaven forbid that we're just an introverted in- intellectual for example uh or you know that we can just be who we are and so that's something that i struggle against many black women struggle against black women who are introverted it's just not being uh, seen and accepted that way so I just wanted to throw that out there as a topic for discussion. What do you think about that? Do you think there's any truth to it? Have you experienced that kind of thing? (laughs) Well, you know, that reminds me of a time when I was living in England uh, Mm -hmm. with, you know, my, my, my good, my good friend and I were sharing a flat and we had just moved in. We'd been in for a few weeks and then the person who lived upstairs said to us one day, well, you know, you all are just not like what, you know, you're not what I expected at all. I mean, you don't even play loud music, right? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, there's that whole, that, that whole stereotype of what 
what it is to be a black person and what it is to be mm -hmm. a black woman. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, I feel that I don't necessarily fit that stereotype. Uh, yes, there are, are wonderful out there extroverted black sisters who are out there living life yes. large and, you know, yes. you know, more power to them, more power to them. Yes. But mm -hmm. that's not the only type of black woman there is. That's all no. I'm saying, right? Yes. And, and it's, you know, it sort of is almost, you know, it can be a little bit of a burden to carry. Let's say, uh, you know, black women who suffer from depression or anxiety or, you know, issues of that nature. Uh, it's never taken as seriously. It's not, it's not expected. Uh, the medical community, uh, you know, just doesn't, doesn't usually offer help. Yeah. Um, that, is, that is a medical community that is not of color. <laughs> <laughs> because again you're seen you're supposed to be you're supposed to be strong you're expected to be strong you're supposed to be able to take more pain you're supposed to uh you know sort of just be just be like, like this beast of burden it's horrible you know that this is the expectation that you're just supposed to be strong or funny or both and that's it yeah you know and also and also please nanny our children you know <laughs> <laughs> oh yes that, that, you know, that brings to mind a couple of experiences, actually, but, 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 you know, I mean, there's so, there's so many stereotypes mm. and, you know, they change slightly depending on where you are. You know, if you are relatively, you know, well-spoken, you seem to have a little bit of education, then there are certain countries in which they'll say, oh, well, you must be a student or perhaps you're a nurse, <laughs> you know? um because that appears to be what's open to you right yes, yes you know i've gotten i've definitely gotten the uh wow you're so well spoken comment before i mean mind you you know like like you i'm a professional copywriter yes so yes. i'm like words words are kind of my thing i have been <laughs> have been for eon what would you what what is it that you're expecting if you hire a writer you know, yeah. surely you would expect that they words would be their thing. They'd be good with words. They'd be good with, with speech. They'd be good at expressing themselves. Exactly. They'd be eloquent. Exactly. They would be erudite. Yeah. You know, of yeah. course, of course we are. Exactly. And, you know, the, the, the color of our skin has nothing to do with that. Yeah. Right? Uh, so, you know, I'm hoping that part of, part of what we're doing with this show, you know, is sort of expanding, I hope, shedding some light on the the uh all the varieties within the diaspora shall we say. <laughs> you know we are we are not a monolith we are definitely not a monolith and so shedding light on hey you know black women can be this way black women can have these aspects of their personality mm -hmm. um wh whether whether positive negative however you choose to look at it but you know, there's much more to us than these narrow boxes and categories in which you try to pigeonhole us. Absolutely, absolutely. Some of us just are quiet types, you know. I, mm -hmm. I was the one that was always to be found in the library. You know, long weekend was, you know, my, you, if we had a long day, weekend coming up, my thing was go to the library, get a stack of books, make sure there was enough food and drink and not leave the house for several days, you know. Heaven. Heaven. Absolute heaven. Yeah. Absolute heaven. I have, I, I have an extroverted side to my personality. I don't, know, I don't know if you'd call it extroverted or if it's just that it's just me being me around people that I'm comfortable with. Right. I don't know which, whichever way you choose to describe it. So I do have that aspect to my personality, you know, and I have a very loud, uh, <laughs> some might say raucous laugh. <laughs> yes. It is what it is. So I have, I do have that part of my personality, but, but most of me is definitely um, introverted, a little bit skittish, can be shy as well. Not, not saying that shyness and introverted are the same because they're not. And that's something that we're going, that's a topic we're actually going to cover in another episode at some point. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I definitely have those aspects uh, to those other aspects of my personality and so do many black women. So our message is let us just let us be great and let us be us. Yes. Don't fit. Don't put us in a box. Don't, don't put us in a us box. Try to fit into your narrow stereotype. 
Okay. Yep. yep. That's it. That is it. That is absolutely it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, so where are we off to next? We are off to our notable section. And, you know, as Lisa said, you know, we want to highlight the diversity of introverts and we also want to highlight the awesomeness of introverts. So from time to time, we're going to feature high profile introverts who have had a positive impact on the world. Mm -hmm. And so today we're going to talk about three black introverts that changed the world. Now, Ooh, <laughs> we, like can't take credit. we can't take credit for this topic. This appeared on Quietly Ambitious on mm -hmm. a, a UK site. Um, and so we're going to just talk a little bit about, about these, three, these three introverts. And these are people that I guarantee you will have heard of. You may not necessarily have known that they were introverts. And so I'm just going to start right off with, with Rosa Parks. Right, Miss Rosa Parks. Yes, Rosa Parks. A very Parks. reserved lady from Alabama. And, you know, it, it, her actions, and, okay, we all, know, we, we all know what her actions are. You want to do a quick recap on Rosa Parks? Well, basically, basically um, she, she, was being, she was being forced, like so many others of that era, people of color of that era, to sit in the back of the bus, at the back of the bus. And uh, she simply refused to do so. And she, did, she just did it in the most introverted way possible. You know, she literally, she went, she sat at the front of the bus and refused to be moved. That was it. That was her <laughs> protest. But, and this, this, is, this is one of the reasons why, you know, we want to highlight her in particular. But, you know, again, the awesomeness of introverts, because yes, there are times when, uh, you, you, you need to be loud and vocal. Absolutely, there's a space and time and place for that. But look at the difference she made simply by sitting and resting in her power. Yes. That's what she yes. did. That yeah. is the quiet power of introverts, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, it's just so impressive. That's why people are still talking about this. That's why yeah. people are still talking about this, you know? And that's, you know, you see people having sit-ins and you know, chaining themselves to places and so on. It's about, you know, just refusing to move in the face of injustice. Injustice. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For okay. sure. So the next, actually, I'm going to come back to that one. I'm going to come back to that one because I'm going to go next to Nelson Mandela. Right? Oh. <laughs> Nelson Mandela. We all know we Nelson love him. Mandela, who stood up against apartheid, was imprisoned for it. And, you know, he was just there, you know, in prison and just, you know, just, just doing his thing. He has identified himself as an INFJ. Yay, INFJs! <laughs> right? And he always, he, you know, he's someone that describes himself as preferring to observe, a key mm -hmm. introvert trait, right? Mm -hmm. He just stayed in prison for something that he believed in. He never gave up and he triumphed. And he never again. gave in. He never gave up. He never gave in. And he was peaceful again, right? There wasn't a lot of bombast, but you know, that is tremendously brave. Mm -hmm. isn't it? Just to sit tight. Sometimes sitting tight is brave, right? Yeah. So sitting tight and, and holding, holding your ground, not, not, not to be confused with stand your ground, uh, which is a whole different topic. But again, holding, you know, staying firm in your power, uh, staying true to what you, what you believe in, Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, look, look at the changes that he threw through his quiet protests and, um, you, you know, through, through his quiet protests that he was able to achieve. Yes. You I mean, basically, him. because of him, apartheid ended. Yes. And he was so. universally respected for his role in it. Yes. 
Mm -hmm. He won a Nobel Prize, if I recall correctly. Yeah, he did that by being quiet. Yeah, a peace prize. A peace prize. Okay. There you have it. How more introverted can you get? (laughs) (laughs) Right? Right. And then we have our president, Barack Obama. Right? Hey, Barack. He is. Right. We still love you. (laughs) He is an example of someone that, you know, can kind of put himself out there when he needs to. But he is, he has said very often that he enjoys his own company. He can find extended contact with people outside his circle to be draining. So, I mean, that is classic introversion, right? Classic introvert. Okay. And you know, you might think, okay, how can somebody be the president of the United States and be an introvert? And that is because, as I think we have said before, it's all about, it's not about being shy and it's not about not having confidence. It's about what gives you energy and what drains you. Right. Right. So you can get... Because I would, I would think it would be hard to argue that he is anything other than confident. He clearly is confident. Yes, he clearly is. But he also enjoyed those times when he was away from the media. Clearly is very confident. Yes. Clearly, Mm -hmm. you know, so Mm -hmm. it's, and I think actually his introversion, his introversion uh, was part of what made him exceptional as a president. I mean, now we have another option uh, to compare him to. We do. Uh, We will not, we will not dwell upon, but look at, but look look at the difference in just in terms of the speeches that they deliver. You know, Obama's, Obama's are, first of all, he's prepared, (laughs) grounded, grounded in facts. Yes. He has done his research. Exactly. Um, he clearly, he probably has uh, to some degree, you know, rehearsed. Mm-hmm. And um, not saying that he was never able to ad lib if he needed to. He was rehearsed, prepared, steeped in his material, steeped in facts, and delivered in measured tones and delivered at a sophisticated level of vocabulary. You know, it just. Yes. You know, and, and it's sort of, sort of uh, his, I, I, I'm not sure that he's an orator at the level of MLK. No. But, no. but very, but, um, but, but who is, right? But, but very, but very, very close in his own way. He certainly, he own certainly way. knew how to wow a crowd and mm-hmm. deliver things with quiet confidence. He's not, yes. he's not bombastic. Yeah. At all. At all, you know, and we love him for it. Yes, what a breath of fresh air. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, let's not dwell on <sighs> it before everybody starts crying. <laughs> he's not orange. Anyway, yes. Moving on. <laughs> you just had to get that word in, didn't you? <laughs> so yes. you know, you know, you know, sis is, is every time I see the other one, mm-hmm. I, I just, I, I'm just, I'm so distraught, and I, I am perplexed, and I do not understand how America let this happen. I mean, I knew how it happened and who clearly voted for him, you yes. know, but it's also people that didn't go out and vote. Yes. So I know this is off topic, but people go and vote. Okay. That's yes. It. <laughs> I agree end with end you. of my little political rant for the day. <laughs> I agree with you, you know? Uh, so, yes. Yeah, so that is, those are our three introverts who, who changed the world, three black introverts who changed the world. I love right. that. And isn't that a wonderful thing? It really is. Isn't that a wonderful thing? You know, two of them, two of them basically, two of them leader of countries. Yes. Right? And yes. one of them a leader of a, of a movement. Exactly. So again, again, anybody that's out there thinking, oh, if this person appears quiet or is not the extroverted norm, then I'll just be done with them. They're, they're, they're sort of useless. No. There's so much, there's so much belief beneath that quiet exterior and extra introverts, a hundred percent can be leaders and excellent leaders. Absolutely. And that seems like a good place for us to wrap up this episode. Thank mm-hmm. you so much for joining us today. Thanks and guys. We look forward to catching you on the next episode. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Introvert Sisters. Loved what you heard? 
You can catch all our episodes on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, and all other major platforms. Subscribe, rate, and write a review. Find us online at theintrovertsisters.com and follow us on Instagram and Facebook at The Introvert Sisters. See you next time. Peace.